March 11th, 2013 was the dreaded day when Star Wars The Clone Wars was cut short by Disney following their acquisition of Lucasfilm, never allowing for the series to fully connect to Revenge of the Sith. Of course, that all changed in August, thank you God, but the news crushed everyone back then, and many customizers in the LEGO community, myself included, stopped making custom clones. However, one of my best friends, Andrew Vu kept going and mastered the art of making custom clones, turning it into a small business now known as AV Figures. Using complex water slide decals that he designs himself, Andrew makes the clones that we could only dream of as kids. This is why I chose to collaborate with him yet again after the Infinity War showcase to join me in celebrating the 10th anniversary of the series with Captain Rex, Commander Cody, Arc Trooper Fives, and Commander Black. Lie. Now, before we really get started though, and feel free to skip ahead if you'd like, I'll put a time code for Rex right here, but I want to explain why exactly I decided to collaborate with Andrew on this and have him make the clones and me only sort of touch them up because I definitely have a variety of reasons. So for one, these showcases are basically for nostalgia to celebrate the show's 10th anniversary and when we were kids trying our hand at decals, we had always dreamed of getting to this point, as I said, and again, Andrew actually did it and mastered water slide decaled clones and sculpting all of their armor, for instance, would have deviated away from that idea. We also kept the clones pretty clean back then, so that's why no weathering was done here either. Next, white paint and black paint do not cooperate and white paint is already Already very thick and clunky and no watering it down doesn't actually help here leaving a little to no room for error if you want it to dry smoothly and then attempting to paint intricate black designs all over it makes it even more of a nightmare because black paint does not wash out of dried white paint like other colors do even if you catch it quickly so each clone would ultimately wind up looking pretty messy and inconsistent with the others had I painted them myself and that was a big thing here consistency. The clones all share the exact same base armor pieces that are manufactured by the Kaminoans, therefore each figure's base black designs needed to also look exactly the same between the four of them before additional colors and accessories. Even if I were successful through the painstaking painting process, it's extremely likely that there would have been obvious issues with things being even and again inconsistent with the others, but none of this is an issue for Andrew with his decals that are designed to precisely wrap around each part of the minifigure's body the exact same way every single time. And lastly, going back to my earlier point about not doing any sculpting for these guys, some may say, well, if you want them to be the same, why not just make resin casts of the sculpts? And while Andrew is certainly capable of doing this, and as a matter of fact, Sonder, who you may remember, one of the greatest sculptors this community has ever seen, already achieved this, but sculpting, much like painting, can't be perfect and can't simulate that manufactured look of clone armor, and even the most godlike sculptors in the community would probably agree that as unbelievable as the sculpts would look, they still wouldn't have that near-perfect precision that Andrew's water slide decals offer to match that manufacturing consistency between each set. And finally, even if I were to use casts and they were casted in white, the problem there is that white resin doesn't really match the white ABS plastic that LEGO uses. And you guys may already know that I do try to stay consistent with LEGO where I can. Now, in this case, Andrew did actually resin cast each of these helmets, but they're all covered in quite a few decals. So it's nowhere near as noticeable had each clone been fully casted entirely with that milky white resin. But all of those reasons combined ultimately led me to having Andrew the clone creator over at AV Figures join me for this project in making each of these iconic clones. So I hope some of that made sense. I know it was a lot, but finally, let's do this. Kicking this off with the captain of the 501st Rex in his phase two armor. Of course, this is just like the ultimate Captain Rex minifigure. I mean, look at this, the designs and the decals and how he has applied them wrapping around all four sides of the torso, wrapping around the arms and all four sides of the minifigure's legs, which I'll show you in just a second here. The custom cast of Lego's Phase 2 helmet with his own decals applied. The J guys are there. The weld marks are ever so present 
throughout the front of the helmet, also along the torso and wherever else they needed to be in this minifigure's design. The tally marks are there. I don't think it was ever stated what the tally marks actually represent, whether they be droids counted in tens or just more substantial droid takedowns like droidicas, super battle droids, or even armored tanks. Doesn't actually matter. Uh, point is, Andrew applied them on both the left and right side of the helmet, and they look really great, accurate, of course, as they continue down onto Rex's left forearm there and also down onto both of his legs. They are iconic to Captain Rex now, and Andrew did a great job in incorporating them into his design. You'll also notice Rex and all the minifigures in this video do feature accessories from Clone Army Customs, in this case, a gray rangefinder and a pair of DC-17 blaster pistols, which of course are iconic to Captain Rex and look so perfect here and really top off the minifigure. One thing Andrew did not mention, actually, was that he wound up including these ball-jointed hands, and these are actually from Minifig Cat, which I was not expecting him to do at all, and I didn't even notice when he was sending over progress photos of the clones that he had actually inserted these ball-jointed hands from Minifig Cat, but they're definitely really cool, really unique, and allow for a wider range of motion with minifigure hands without breaking that Lego look, and I think that's really cool. Also, you'll notice that uh, Captain Rex here does sport his own set of fabric accessories that Andrew makes himself with his own fabric, and I think it's really great because as Andrew has proven over on his Instagram, his fabric is a lot less prone to fraying than other vendors in the community, and I think that is really, really great. So uh, as he's demonstrated on his Instagram, if you like really pulled and tried to tear uh, these pauldrons, you'll find that it is actually a bit more difficult than you might uh, have guessed, and I think that's really, really great. And uh, also, if we go ahead and split the minifigure in half, and by the way, I do not uh, recommend you actually attempt to do so just for the sake of keeping your minifigure intact if you do choose to order one from Andrew. But if we go ahead and remove uh, the wastecape, you can see uh, how it is applied. It's pretty much exactly the same as all minifigure wastecapes, as I'm sure you've seen up to this point. Um, but if we go ahead and keep that off for just a moment, you'll see just how much detail is hidden underneath that wastecape. All these decals wrapping around all four sides of the minifigure's legs, as I mentioned earlier, and it is just phenomenal. I mean, all of that detail, especially down toward the bottom of the boots, just so, so cool and detail that we never even thought about adding to our clones when we were kids back in 2009 and 10 doing this. It's just seriously, these minifigures, I cannot stress it enough. I mean, Andrew really mastered the art of making custom clones and you will continue to see uh, exactly that throughout this video. I mean, you look at the belt and how it wraps around all four sides of the torso. It is phenomenal and so, so cool. Even the black uh, jumpsuit underneath the armor shows through on the sides of the torso and the decals are sealed on well enough that you can pass the arms over those areas as many times as you want and they will not tear. I think that is so, so fantastic. Andrew really produces quality clones with his water slide decals like this community has never seen elsewhere. And the only thing that I did for Captain Rex here was literally paint the neck on this Lego clone head and this fin hairpiece in blonde for when the helmet is removed. And that is literally all I did. I did consider taking a standard classic hairpiece and sanding that down to match Rex's buzz cut a little bit more. But then I also kind of, to be honest with you, wanted to move on with my life and just settled for this. I just have no more words uh, for the work Andrew did here with, with capturing Captain Rex in Lego. It is just a near perfect figure. Oh, and by the way, while I was making the order for this showcase over on CAC's website, I did pick up one of their printed Captain Rex jetpacks. And while Rex doesn't wear it too often in the series, I think actually only on like one or two occasions, it does look really cool. And all of these CAC accessories with Andrew's water slide decals just really make for the ultimate Captain Rex minifigure, like I said, probably two or three times already. Next up, the most iconic clone commander in the entire Grand Army of the Republic, Commander Cody, the leader of the 212th attack battalion and Obi-Wan's right hand man you know who he is and Andrew did a fantastic job in replicating him in minifigure form of course once again the amazing water slide decal designs that Andrew has applied here wrapping around all four sides of Cody's torso wrapping around the arms with Cody's unique shoulder pad designs also wrapping around all four sides of the minifigure's legs it is once again really really impressive and super super seamless across the board and just so so 
so impressive. Um, also, pretty much all that I did with Commander Cody here was implement this orange sun visor from Clone Army Customs, which apparently are becoming more and more rare now because Tyler Page has been having a little bit of a tough time making more of them. Either way, as you can see, what I did here was basically carve out and glue on this antenna onto the right side of the visor, this little white floodlight onto the top that I sculpted and glued on, and also this little antenna that is also carved and glued on uh, to the left side of the sun visor. And while we're on the left side of the helm, you'll also notice this little piece, which is actually sculpted and casted by Andrew and glued onto the left side of the helmet, tucked just behind the sun visor as accurate uh, to Cody's helmet in the movies and in the series. And it is so, so cool. If we go ahead and remove this incredibly fragile visor with all these accessories on it, you'll see all the decals that Andrew applied underneath the sun visor are all there. And also underneath, I did paint on Cody's scar onto the left side of the head. And just like all the clones in this video, I did paint the black collar wrapping around the minifigure's neck. So all those elements are there. Unfortunately, if I go ahead and put a clone style hairpiece on him, it does kind of get covered up. Uh, so that kind of sucks, but at least the scar is still there. One thing I also did on Andrew's Cody here was apply that antenna that you'll notice on the left shoulder. And that was definitely a little bit tedious. You can kind of see what I'm talking about uh, right here. And it looks pretty good for the most part. It's just a little bit thicker and a little bit bigger than I wanted it to be, but it is actually using the original antenna designs that I always did for my clone commanders all the way, uh, you know, five years ago. And, and it's, it's okay. Just, you know, a little big, like I said. And uh, yeah, also Cody's nameplate is present uh, within Andrew's designs here. The comm link is there on his right forearm, just like Rex and all the clones um, in this video and all of Andrew's clones in general. Um, also on the back, you might've already noticed the jump pack from Clone Army Customs, a really fantastic white ABS molded piece with printing running through the center. Another one of their really awesome accessories. You might've already noticed Cody's signature jetpack, another really great accessory provided by Clone Army Customs, a white ABS injected piece with printing running through the center and it just uh, really wouldn't be the same without it. So if we go ahead and remove it though temporarily, I'll give you a look at the design on the back of the torso that uh, Andrew applied. Once again, looking so, so great as the belt, uh, as I mentioned, continues onto the sides of the torso and the jumpsuit uh, on the shoulders there showing through, but still maintaining its application through uh, the ceiling, no matter how many times the minifigure's arms passes over it, like I mentioned uh, with Captain Rex. So then also you'll notice uh, the leg designs there on the sides of each leg do connect seamlessly with the designs on the front, like on the thigh area. And I just had to point that out at some point because to me that is just so cool. And Andrew is just always so consistent with things like that. And finally, uh, on top of the ball jointed minifig cat hands, once again, we do have the Brick Arms DC-15A blaster rifle. I think in new canon now, it's just DC-15, but honestly, I don't care. To me, growing up, it was always the DC-15A blaster rifle and a DC-15S carbine, which you'll see in just a moment uh, with Arc Trooper 5. But to me, this is everything a Commander Cody minifigure needs to be, and uh, yeah, there you go. Our third minifigure, arguably the best in the video, the famous clone that means so much to all of us, Fives, the ARC Trooper that knew too much. He was so great as he was so well developed throughout the course of the entire show, and Andrew has done an incredible job in portraying him in minifigure form here. I mean, seriously, all of his work with the decals this time, I mean, it just makes uh, for, like I said, the best minifigure in this video, if you ask me. They're all phenomenal, but Fives, of course, always holds a special place place for me anyway and as you can see uh, his decals just like Rex just like Cody and just like Bly who you'll see in a moment wrapping around all four sides of his torso wrapping around the arms and all four sides of each legs they are just so so incredibly well done and uh, of course being completely accurate to how Fives appears on screen this of course being uh, more so of the live action adaptation of what Fives may have looked like uh, if he were brought to the big screen and then again reduced down to minifigure form you'll notice on his helmet this time around and once again the white resin cast of Lego's phase 2 clone trooper helmet we've got the blue Rishi eel that killed cut up we also do have another gray clone Army customs rangefinder back here once again Andrew actually has to drill in holes on the sides of each helmet to be able to attach these and you can kind of see that if I go ahead and remove it there and real quick if we go ahead and remove the helmet underneath of course we've got five's face and just like all the clones in this video I've got the neck painted in black but this time of course we've got fives here so we've got his goatee 
along with the number five painted in arabesque on the right side of his forehead. And this turned out exactly how I wanted it to. While we have the helmet off, we'll go ahead and remove the custom painted head. And this head, along with this uh, custom modified and painted uh, Clonomy Customs Arc Trooper backpack are the only two things that I added to Andrew's fives here. Um, but pretty much this actually came as a sand blue piece from Clonomy Customs. And then it had these two giant clips on the bottom and right sides. So after removing those and then sculpting this like bowling pin thing or whatever it is and this piece on the right side and gluing those in place, I was able to paint everything that you see here in black, uh, pavement color and also gunmetal. But unfortunately, the neck brace was too thick. So I actually had to cut that off, sand down the rough edge on the back, glue in a one by one Lego tile. And then similar to Andrew's Iron Man Mark 50 wing flaps, I actually uh, had to take a piece of uh, Cape Madness fabric and glue that on as the neck brace instead of an actual Lego ABS plastic one like CAC originally had it. So taking this out of the picture as well temporarily to give you a look at the fabric accessories that Andrew has going on for fives here. You can see we've got the arc pauldron with the ammo pouch just like Rex. Of course, they're two completely different pauldrons, but they share that same feature. Um, so we've got that. And it's amazing. And then we also do have this phenomenal torso design, again, wrapping around all four sides of the minifigures torso, the jumpsuit showing on the shoulders on both sides of the torso looking really awesome. And then we do have the arc trooper gauntlets in gray on both of the minifigures arms, and it looks really, really cool. And then you can see we do have the back of the torso design here. And what's really great about Fives, uh, waist cape especially, is that Andrew actually incorporated the pouches that Fives has and the straps onto the waist cape itself. And so as we unfold the waist cape, you can see exactly uh, how they looked on screen before, of course, he printed it out and then uh, made this into the actual waist cape that we have here. And this one, of course, actually having six total slots to be draped over the minifigure's legs. But before we do so, once again, just to give you a look at Fives' legs, they are so, so detailed. All those different blue stripes wrapping around each one of the arc uh, knee pads, just looking so, so cool. And uh, just to give you a look at just how consistent and seamless each one of these decal designs are, it is just really something else. Reassembling Fives one more time here to talk about the Brick Arms DC-15S Carbine, just a phenomenal piece. And I think it's actually called the DC-15A in canon now. And the DC-15A rifle, like I mentioned, is actually the DC-15, but I don't care. This is the DC-15A rifle. This is the DC-15S Carbine. That's how it always was when we were kids, and that's how I will continue uh, to refer to them. So this is, uh, like I said, I think the best minifigure in this video. Let me know if you agree down in the comments. Regardless, they are all fantastic. And now let's talk about Bly. But why though? Why did I have Andrew make Commander Bly for this video instead of Commander Wolf or literally any other clone? If you go back to my channel to the very beginning, sort oldest to newest or just search it up, you'll find a video from February 2008 called How to Make Commander Bly. This is the video that pretty much put me on the map when I first got started, showing everyone how to color their clones red with this yellow marker to make them look like Bly. Little triangle and I colored it red with this um, yellow marker. Now, Bly was only in a couple episodes in season one, but I latched on a Commander Bly, and I couldn't tell you why. I also didn't mean for that to rhyme, but everybody on Skype and Uvu knew how obsessed I was, and I must have made at least 30 Sharpie versions of him before I finally settled on a painted version I did in like early 2010. He was so important to the channel, more so than Commander Wolf, and I definitely didn't want to push Andrew into doing five clones for this video. So if we're celebrating not only the 10th anniversary of the series, but also my YouTube channel, it just made so much sense to have him here. And Andrew, again, did one hell of a job in replicating his Revenge of the Sith armor in Lego form. Andrew, of course, having already done Commander Bly several times, but I believe uh, this one has just turned out looking so, so great. Of course, we didn't actually wind up doing his Phase 1 armor from the Clone Wars series because we wanted to stick to Phase 2. And as you can see, Andrew did also do the water slide decals on this cast of LEGO's Phase 2 clone helmet once again, but it's really impressive because all that yellow, you would think that would need to be painted, but it's actually all still decaled and it is unbelievable. I have no idea how he's able to do that with water slides. It's so impressive. 
impressive. And as you can see, he does have a custom pair of macro binoculars. Now, these are not the ones from Aerialite or even Clonomy Customs, if he offers any. I honestly couldn't tell you. Um, but these are actually sculpted by Andrew and actually a custom cast. And I think he's uh, starting to offer these more and more now on the site, if I'm not mistaken. As you can see, we do also have the Brick Arms DC-15A blaster rifle. Once again, Commander Bly used one to gun down Ayla on Felucia. And again, you can see we have the decals wrapping around all four sides of Bly's torso, wrapping around the arms with those unique designs and those like unique little canisters Bly has on his right arm, the comm link there, and the decals again wrapping around all four sides of either leg. And once again, the minifig cat ball jointed hands uh, making an appearance and their last appearance for this video. But if we go ahead and remove Bly's helmet to give you a look at the head that I painted underneath, once again, utilizing the more aggressive clone head that Lego has to offer, you can see I painted the yellow tattoos that Bly does actually have on his face in the CGI series, which of course we can assume he still had under his helmet in Revenge of the Sith. I did also paint the black collar around his neck once again. And, and similar to Rex, I didn't take a classic hairpiece and sand the crap out of it to make his brown buzz cut hairstyle, uh, but instead I pretty much just have a dark brown fin hairpiece for you. Hopefully it does the job, but if we go ahead and remove the hairpiece and the head to give you a look at the fabric accessories that Andrew does have included with Bly here, it is incredible what he's got uh, with Bly's pauldron and how this entire like ammo chain actually connects to this strap and to these two slots that actually go underneath the torso and then over the minifigure's legs. It is done so, so well and works uh, really seamlessly. This has been done on several minifigures before. It's definitely nothing new to Andrew, but it is new to me and really, really awesome. Here's a look at the decal design on the back of the torso. Just a standard uh, clone template because uh, Bly doesn't actually have anything on his back. And that belt just wrapping around all four sides of the torso is just so, so impressive. And the color scheme just absolutely perfect as well. Bly also has a very simple waist cape. It's literally just tan. Really not too exciting, but it is accurate. And Andrew did a really great job here as well. And now that we have the entire minifigure disassembled, the legs looking really great with the two different shades of yellow, the more bright yellow and the mustard uh, yellow that we do have running throughout Bly's entire armor as a secondary color. It just looks so great. And Andrew did a really fantastic job. And again, just all that detail wrapping around all four sides of each leg. I mean, the, the you know, the toe detail, uh, the boot detail. It's just all so well done. Andrew truly is the master clone creator. He does not put that on his Instagram for no reason. And I strongly recommend you head on over to avfigures.com. It will be linked down in the description below. You're really missing out if you don't head on over there because Andrew offers so much in the way of custom clones, as you've already seen in this video. He also offers decal packs if you want to learn how to do it yourself and apply the decals yourself. And he's offering his own custom sets now, like actual builds that he designed himself, uh, that he got the parts for, designed the packaging for, had them professionally sealed, and is now offering on his website. They're really freaking cool. He's even offering these custom digital printed Iron Man minifigures, the Iron Man Mark 50 from Avengers Infinity War, all digitally printed, and it is phenomenal. He designed all of this himself completely and so, so utterly far surpassing anything I was trying to do with my Iron Man Mark 50 back when Avengers Infinity War came out. We actually collaborated on that figure, but the design work did not come anywhere close to this. Obviously, I painted mine, and Andrew spent an immense amount of time designing this himself, and I mean, this has to be the most clean and crisp printed Iron Man minifigure this community has ever seen. I mean, this and so much more is offered by Andrew over at avfigures.com. So much passion uh, goes into his work, and he's always so engaged with his followers over on Instagram. He just sets such a high standard. There are no other vendors that make clones like this, and there are no other vendors with designs like this. Andrew really is and always has been something else. And if you ever do um, have the opportunity to pick up one of his figures or just really anything from his site, I do not think you'll be disappointed at all. Um, so on that note, guys, I think it's finally time to wrap up this video. Why have you come before us today, Captain Rex? And where's Skywalker? Sir, I believe General Skywalker may be too close to the situation. And why is that? Explain yourself, Captain. I reviewed the report regarding the incident with CT-5555. Fives. Yes, sir, and I believe I may have discovered a correlation between what Fives was claiming at the time and how the Chancellor's office responded to the situation. 
go on. When Five supposedly attacked the Chancellor, he did not request Jedi involvement, and the order was given to capture Fives, not kill. Instead, Commander Fox of the Coruscant Guard, who answers only to the Chancellor, escalated the situation and antagonized my Ark Trooper, the alleged victim of a parasite affecting his brain, and shot him on sight instead of stunning him. General Windu, I believe this was an execution. I'm putting everything on the line to bring these concerns to all of you, because Fives was a loyal soldier. Thank you for coming to us with your findings, Captain. General Plo Koon recently discovered the clone army was actually ordered by Count Dooku before the war, further validating your fallen ARC troopers' claims of conspiracy. So we will remain here and do nothing. What? You have to be kidding me. Sir, you can't possibly- Good day, Captain Rex. Man, I can't wait for these chips to go off. What was that? Nothing, General Windu. All right, guys, and there you go. That is it for this collaborative showcase between AV Figures and I. Thank you so much for sticking around for the whole thing. I know it got a little bit extensive there, especially with that explainer toward the beginning, but ultimately I thought it was necessary. Either way, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for being so patient and waiting for me to bring it to the channel, by the way. As I know, it definitely took me a lot longer than I would have liked, but ultimately with Andrew's incredible work, personally, I think that it was worth it. And let me know uh, what you think down in the comments, as I always love to hear you guys' uh, feedback on all the new minifigures and uh yeah, one more time, of course, I've got to thank my best friend Andrew over at AV Figures for making this possible. Andrew continues to inspire me and the LEGO community, especially over on Instagram on a regular basis. And like I just said at the end of Bly's segment there, he's got so much to offer over on AV Figures, so much more than what you have seen with just these four clones. You have no idea. So please uh, definitely do check out avfigures.com. It will be linked down in the description below. Um, I really cannot stress that enough. You're missing out otherwise. And that's also it guys for showcases in 2018 i don't really think i'll be showcasing arthur morgan before the turn of the new year so it's been incredible especially with avengers infinity war and so many other showcases where i really feel as though i did my best work here and you guys always being there supporting me every step of the way it means more to me than you know and i so hope you will join me once again in 2019 for all the new showcases like arthur morgan from red dead 2 or even the next clone Wars showcase the final 10th anniversary clone Wars showcase featuring cad bane darth maul and pre visla then and shortly followed by more MCU 10 years showcases like Captain America and Red Skull from the first Avenger, the stealth suit from the Winter Soldier, and the original Avengers team. On top of that, the Spider-Man PS4 suit, Aquaman minifigures that I'll be making throughout the year, along with another massive showcase this time for the big conclusion, Avengers Endgame. It should be pretty crazy, and you can look forward to the development cycle videos once again picking up very soon in the coming weeks and I absolutely cannot wait for that and of course you will always see the early regular progress photos over on my Patreon if you do want to consider supporting the channel otherwise of course I always post the preview photos of each minifigure over on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook before the showcases go live here on the channel so hopefully I will catch you guys in one of those places and yeah I think that's it guys the clones really did change everything for me as a kid, kickstarting this entire YouTube channel and opening me up to an entire world of creativity through such an incredible series that George Lucas started all those years ago. And so making these clones with Andrew really did mean a lot. So thank you again, take care, and may the force be with you. Fox, could you come here a sec? Yeah, sure. Here, look at this. Whoa! Blaster wasn't set to stun! No, no, again, can't believe it! I am so sorry! The video, I know that explainer toward the beginning got a little bit. Higher Grand Army of the Republic, Cam. Cam. Ant <laughs> would not have been able to be made with <laughs> B figures and I thank you so much for making a rap blah, 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 blah. yeah and one more time f this guy oh sh video oh my god what the f
just oh that's a ladybug holy shit that scared the uh, i thought you died may the force be with you